Hello, this is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to episode 14 of Exploring Joomla 3.x. Uh, it's been a while since I've um, posted a video, and I apologize for that, but uh, this, after all, is a hobby, and I have a, a job and a family that I have to maintain. So anyway, uh, in part 5, uh, or in this episode, um, we're going to continue on with um, uh, uh, creating a site module for Joomla 3, and this is part 6. Uh, in part five, um, if, if, since it's been a while, if you remember, we talked about the concept of MVC, uh, Model View Controller. We added a helper class. Um, we talked about querying the database and then updating the view to show uh, the, the quote that we queried from the database. In this, uh, <clears throat> in this part, we're going to uh, talk about parameters, uh, how to add a parameter. We're going to talk about uh, form fields. Uh, we're going to add some translation strings. Um, we're going to talk about how to access a parameter with uh, code. Uh, we might, if there's time, take a quick look on how to see how we look at the entrails of, uh, of, uh, of the module. And uh, then we're going to add another view, and of course we're going to test our results. So, um, if need be, you might want to grab you a cold drink or whatever it is that you drink at times like these and, and join me. Uh, one last reminder: um, If you've uh, don't have the code, or you want to start, uh, you've skipped some of the earlier parts, and you want to follow along with us, if you go to uh, my website, myheap.com, oh, I'm sorry, wrong one, and go to Technology Exploring Joomla 3x, and go to uh, Writing Modules for Joomla, and then the one that we're uh, had finished part five. If you go there, you can download. Uh, the archive for the uh, module f for the code, you know, at its current place there. Uh, extract that to your uh, project folder, and then uh, of course you can install it in into the website if you want. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about parameters. If we go to the back end and we go to extensions modules, and we oops, I need to sign in. I think mine was admin admin and look at our random quote module we'll see that there's a number of tabs here okay and these tabs uh, contain uh, parameters but the parameters are built into um, the module uh, portion of Joomla when it uh, how, how it handles modules so we can actually add other things here uh, to extend uh, uh, more options to the module. So, so the big thing I think the takeaway from parameters is that uh, it increases your module's versatility. You know, sometimes you want your module to be able to display uh, in different forms. So maybe you have a list of something, and you want to list them. Uh, give the uh, user the option of maybe listing them in an ordered list, or maybe just paragraph tags, or um, maybe a definition set or something, but you would like to give all those options to the user. You would do that uh, using a parameter. Um, so what a parameter actually is, it's a, it's a way to store a, a little piece of data with your uh, extension, whether if it's a module or, or a component um, or, or plug-in that allows um, the the end user to set some options that you can access then programmatically okay so we're going to create a, a simple parameter for a random quote module here uh, so we can lay some groundwork because later we'll um, we'll build on it so we're going to add a parameter that will allow the administrator to set um, the title of the module block let me come over here and show you so this is the random quote module and see the t the title block says random quote so we want to we want to give them the option to either use the title that they've given in the back end right which you know we find right here uh, under title or we want to use the uh, the author of this quote as the title instead okay and uh, we'll accomplish this uh, using a parameter um, you know that says I want to use one or the other and then visually we will um, do it with a, uh, a view so um, parameters really kind of start with form fields um, Joomla uh, supports um, 
a great number of form fields. They're built in and available to you. Um, they can, like I said, they can be used in quite a number of different places in your extensions. Uh, I'll give you a couple examples. You know, form fields can be used uh, in the edit screen of a component, allowing the user to enter information that Joomla can save to the database. Um, um, or you know the uh, administrator can manipulate and set values, you know parameters, make your extension uh, more robust. So if you're familiar with HTML forms, then form fields they should kind of be old hat to you. Form fields are used extensively in Joomla. You know there's no exception. Um, it, Joomla uses them a lot of places as we've already discussed. Um, so useful are form fields that uh, Joomla has uh, created a class devoted to them. And has expanded uh, their uh, the use, you know, to give things uh, the ability to do things like uh, um, validation and and that sort of stuff. So to see a list of all the available form fields in Joomla, we can go to Joomla.org or docs.joomla.org and form underscore field. And if you download this tutorial, there's a link there. Uh, if you read it on the website, there's a link there as well. So here, we t it talks about all you know you know form validation and client side etc etc but the section down here are the standard form field types so you see there's access level calendar captcha check boxes color content type I mean, there's just tons and tons of form fields that uh, Joomla has in the box just waiting for us to use okay so um, if as we look through this list um, I think that uh, the the form field that would most suit us would either be a uh, select list, okay? So a select list, you know, uh, allows you to give a number of options in a list and allows the user to select one, or a radio button where you give a list of uh, of uh, options and the user can only select one. Um, a select list can be made to select multiple, uh, but since we're only saying, hey, do you want the author's title? On the uh, module, as the mo or the uh, the author's name as the module title, or do you not? So uh, I think a radio button then would suit us probably just fine. Um, so let's talk about the manifest file. So if we go to our modules XML file or manifest file, and we'll open this to edit to uh, add uh, to add. Uh, um, um, parameters to the module is actually pretty simple. Uh, we have to uh, use a few more tags, uh, but they're they're pretty easy and straightforward. Um, so any area that's uh, going to or any module that's going to have parameters has to have a pair of config tags. So we'll create our config tag section, and let's close that. So the config section tells um, Joomla when it installs that there are configuration parameters that are going to be associated with this with this uh, extension uh, with this module. So inside the config tags, uh, we need a fields tag. Okay, and it takes one attribute called name, and it's called params. Now I will be perfectly honest with you. I mean, this field is required. Uh, the name equals params. If you, if you set it to something else, it doesn't work. So I don't know if it refers to um, like the params variable that you can access the params with, or if it represents the params uh, column in the database. I, I've been trying to find out. Uh, as soon as I find out, it'd probably be a nice little in the weeds thing. Uh, to talk about uh, once I learn and uh, if any of you guys uh, can tell me uh, why it's required or or what's the you know what's the purpose of the name tag if you can't use anything else if you know anything about it just uh, um, either comment below the video or or contact me on the website so now that we have the fields tag let's close it before we forget because I am very very forgetful okay and then the next thing we need are field sets. Now, field set. Okay, and a field set takes a name attribute. And we're going to talk about this here in just a minute. Let me close this tag. 
the field set um, uh, breaks your field or your parameters down and uh, allows you to group them by sets of fields. I mean, that's how they get the name, obviously, is field set. And if we look in the back end of Joomla, um, we'll notice that uh, you know we have a number of tabs here. Okay, and if we use a field set name of basic, they will show up right here. Our fields that we include. If we use a field set of advanced, it will show up here with these fields here. Now, interestingly enough, you can name this anything you want. And if you do name it something other than basic or advanced, it creates uh, Joomla will create another tab. Okay, and that tab will be named um, whatever whatever you call it. So if we said we want a field set and we want to call it banana, it will create a field set up here called banana. Um, now one thing to remember is that Joomla is a case, I mean, I'm sorry, it's a, it's internationalized, you know, so you can put language strings in here. So what it will do is when it sees the name here, banana, um, it will create a uh, a language string right that uh, it will want you to translate so if you use something um, like banana it would it would create a a language string on this tab and what you would see here would be like com underscore modules con uh, underscore um, and then the name that you gave the tab like banana and then field set underscore label and then you would uh, in or so in order to um, for the text to put there, you'd have to include a language string, and hopefully that makes sense. So if you got questions, um, um, email me and, and we'll talk about it. But the whole idea here is that uh, you know banana uh, is banana in English, but it might be called something else in another language, and we would obviously want to be able to translate that so that the user has um, the whole experience of of the module in their native language. Okay, but we're just going to uh, we're going to put our module parameter right here and, uh, and we're just going to uh, which would requires the use of name um, basic so we'll, so that puts it in the module tab so that's the only one different any other one puts it in a tab named that okay so now inside the field sets we can include our fields okay and you know, we said that we were going to use a radio button type field so let's go take a look at that if on the form fields uh, list that you see on Joomla if you click on radio scroll down here until we find it it will open up this page right here and this page tells you uh, some some examples on how it's used but more importantly it talks about the attributes so the radio field okay um, has to have a, the type must be set to radio that's how Joomla identifies the following stuff as a radio field it has to have a name and it's got to be it's got to be the unique name of the field okay and finally a label you know is, is the descriptive title of the field so you know we might say um, you know the, the label is uh, you know do, do you want to use the author title as the, the module title and then um, the description is optional, but if when they mouse over the um, a label, it, you you can include additional text here, maybe to help uh, explain what the parameter is used for, for to the user. Okay, and then uh, default. This is an optional one. If you have a list of radio buttons, do you want one of them set as the default, or you know check check one of them as the default so that way it's written to the database uh, when they save the module. And then finally, uh, you can append a CSS class to the uh, radio button. Okay, and that's new in Joomla 3. And then we're going to use this button group, button group yes, no. Okay, um, because this these classes here are bootstrap and it gives a nice, you know, colored yes, no buttons. So we're going to use those. And we, we'll run into one little caveat with that, but we'll go over that. And then finally, um, Finally, you know, you'll give your options. Okay, so let's let's go do that. So uh, we have a field. Oops. Uh, you guys already know that I can't type. So, all right. So the type will be radio. 
right? Because it's a radio button that we're using. I'm just going to break these along uh, lines just so that it's a little uh, easier to read. Okay. So the name. Now remember, the name has to be unique. I'm going to call mine author title. Okay. So that's the variable that we'll end up using to uh, access the value that they selected. And then finally, we need a label. Now remember, we're trying to internationalize our um, our uh, uh, module here so we're gonna put a language string in here that will that will translate using the uh, language file so this is will be called mod uh, random quote right because I wanna this I kind of in the language string or files you know this identifies that this belongs that this belongs to the random quote module okay and then um, this is a parameter right so we're gonna say param and the print name of this parameter is author title okay and we do this here uh, try to make these uh, language strings descriptive so if you find a typo or something you, you kind of know where to go or what string to look for. So when I'm in the language uh, file, you know, when I see mod random quote, all right, well, param, well, I know that's a parameter. Okay, it's the author title parameter. That's the one I'm looking for. So that uh, takes care of the label. And then finally, we need, or uh, now we need um, default. Um, so our default in this this case, oops. In this case, uh, I'm going to set this to zero, which means no. So whenever you're using um, the yes/no classes from Bootstrap, the uh, the no portion of it has to be set to a value of zero if you want to get a red button. Otherwise, you get two green buttons. So uh, just being a stickler for the aesthetics, uh, we're going to use zero here. Uh, in case they say no, and you know, I still need to fix that. Okay, so now that we have our default, uh, we need a description. And description, uh, same same thing here. We're going to use the language string, so mod random quote. Um, this is a parameter. And the parameter is author title. And this is the description. So that takes care of that. So that string will be used. And then remember, we can use a class. And the class we're going to use is BTN, which stands for button group. And button group yes no and that's what gives us the nice colorful buttons in the back so finally that's all the uh, attributes that we need to include for the radio button field now we just need to include our options okay so the first option the value uh, we're going to say this is the yes uh, option. So the value equals um, author title. So if they select this option, the author title will be saved as, um, as the value of the author title attribute. So this, remember, this is the variable that we're creating, author title, the parameter variable. And if they select yes, then we will assign the string author title to this variable when uh, if, if they've selected it so hopefully you know I'm making a little sense here so now uh, this is the string that we want to replace uh, or, or, or for the user to see so um, again this is a translatable string so we're going to use some of Joomla's built-in translatable strings and there's one for yes called js okay and that's the end of that option Okay, and then finally we need another option. 
So here they said yes, so we need no value equals. And remember, I told you if we're using the bootstrap yes, no buttons that um, we have to set the value to zero. Otherwise, it, it messes up the, uh, you know, the, the bootstrap or the CSS doesn't do quite right. Instead of getting a red and a green button, we get a, a two green buttons. So we're going to say the value is um, zero. We're going to use the built-in um, J no translation string that um, Joomla provides and then finally we're going to close our option tag and then finally we're done with the field set so we're going to close the field tag okay so we just done a whole lot of typing there so let's um, so let's uh, let's let's go back over this again and make sure that uh, let's see we got a typo here That's that one. Field, field, O P T I O N. Value equals, hang on, let me uh, figure out what's going on here and I'll be right back. Okay, I see. I didn't close the closing brace on uh, the field tag up here, so that's why I was getting the error. And, you know, when we get further along, we start talking about net beans and some of the code checking. Um, uh, s some of that stuff will get a little easier. Using uh, just a simple editor, it's pretty easy to make mistakes. So anyway, again, now that we have uh, uh, typed all this stuff in, let's talk about it again. So if you want parameters in your module, you have to have uh, config tags in your uh, modules manifest file, your XMS file. Our XML file, and then inside the um, uh, config config tags, you'll have a fields tag, and then inside the fields tag, you'll have one or more field set tags, and the field set tag uh, determines where in the back end the fields listed between them will be displayed. If we use the name of basic, it will show up in the module tab. If we use the name of advanced here, it will show up in the advanced tag. If we use any other name, Joomla will create a new tag, uh, a new tab, and will create a language string um, to translate the name of this tab um, uh, for you. And then, of course, you'll have to add the language string uh, to the language file for that to work. But again, so we're just going to use the basic one for this. So then inside the field set, uh, you put all of your fields that go to that field set. And we decide that we're going to use a radio button. Okay, and so the type uh, for a radio button is radio. You have no choice. It's got to be set that. Uh, it's, it's mandatory. Or it won't work. The name uh, attribute is the it creates the... Uh, the variable name of the parameter that we're trying to read. So this has to be unique. Um, so you, you know you can't use something that you may have already used somewhere else. Uh, and you'll know if you did. The label is what's going to be presented to the left of uh, the radio buttons. And this is a translatable string. So we've created a language string here that we will have to put in our translation file uh, to put whatever it is that we want to put for the label. If you want, you can have a default value. It's not mandatory, but if um, uh, if you want it, you can have it, and this will pre-check um, whatever value you put in here. And we said that uh, our default is zero, which means no. Okay. And then uh, finally, the description is another uh, uh, tag that's not mandatory. It's optional. But if, um, if you have a, a label, you might as well put in a description. And again, this is a language string that would be translated. And then finally, in the, uh, you have an optional class attribute where you can assign classes, um, uh, CSS classes, to your uh, radio button. So in this case, we're going to use the built-in bootstrap uh, class of button group and button group yes, no. The button group yes, no gives us the colored uh, red and green uh, yes no buttons and um, 
I've discovered through play is that if the no button is not given a value of zero, it does not turn red. It stays green. So that being said, and then uh, so finally, then um, our radio button has to have options. So we put one option tag for each option that we're going to have available for the radio buttons. Um, so the first one here we're going to say is yes. This is a translatable string, so we're using Joomla's built-in. Uh, string for yes. Uh, so if it's English, if it, it'll say yes. If it's Spanish, maybe it'll say C, uh, etc. And then assign it a value if it's selected. So we're saying that our our um, author title variable will be assigned the value of author title if yes is selected. And then same down here for no. We're using the language string for no. We're saying that the value is zero. We've already talked about that. And then if that is selected, then the variable author title will have a value of zero indicating that the user said no. So with that out of the way uh, we have all the prerequisites there um, to use a um, uh, a parameter uh, so let's save that. Now the next thing that we need to do is uh, we need to add our language strings that we just created so uh, in your project folder if you go to language and GB and then Remember, there's a dot ini and a dot sys ini, and you remember the dot sys ini is used in the back end. Um, and let me just show you, just to refresh you, if we're in the, uh, ex um, let me close that. Oh, I need to log back in. Sorry about this, guys, girls. Okay, so if we go to extensions, um, manage right and then we're say let's filter this out so we want modules okay and let's find our random quote module so the sys.ini right it is used in the back end in certain parts for administration and then if we look back here particularly it's used over here where you're when you manage an extension so we see random quote site module this is this is where it picks up um, the name and, and the um, description from the language file. I remember we grabbed this other stuff from um, the manifest file with the metadata. But now if we go to extensions and modules and we see random quote here, uh, you'll notice that this says mod underscore random quote description. Okay, and here this says mod underscore random quote. And the reason why this says uh, this instead of some strings is that we have to um, we have to have the strings in uh, the the other language file, the the dot ini file. So let's open that one to edit. You see, right now that one's empty. Okay, so we need to. Um, um, add some quotes here. So I tell you what we'll do. Since these are, let's copy these and paste them over here. Okay, let's let's add some comments here. So we're right now we're just adding some language strings that we didn't add um, in the episode uh, before this one where we probably should have. So um, we're we're playing a little catch up here, and I apologize uh, for this. So let's see. This is a translation strings uh, for the uh, Joomla. Well, here let's say for Joomla to use um, for the user interface. Okay, where the user will work. Okay, and then um, let's just. Uh, these are the uh, translation strings. Um, for module and admin area. And this is uh, extensions modules. So w this way we know that this group of strings here um, will be used when you go to extension modules right in the admin area so I like to make notes in mine it's not necessarily mandatory but when you go back six eight months a year later and you're trying to fix uh, a typo that's in a string it uh, makes it a little bit easier to 
uh, fine. So now um, we need to add uh, translation strings um, uh, for the module parameter. So let's make a note here. Translation strings for the module parameters. Parameters. Okay. And remember we said those were mod random quotes. Right? That's how we start all of ours. And we have their parameters. And this one was author title. Okay. And we're just going to do a little cut and or copy and paste here. And then this one was description. Alright, so for um, for the for the label, we want to uh, display um, replace a title with author. Author's name. Okay, so that's the label, and then um, and then the description. If they mouse over that, we'll say replace uh, the title of the module with the author's name. All right, so that takes care of the uh, translation strings. And recall, when we were over here in the XML file, these are the two strings we're talking about. When it displays the radio button, Joomla will look up this uh, translation string, and when it finds it, it will replace it with replace uh, title with author's name. And then for the description, this language string will be looked up, and it will replace a language string with replace the title of the module with the author's name. So we can save that, and we can close this, uh, close that, and this we can save and close. So at this point, um, we have enough done to see if we can um, check our work anyway. So let's uh, let's go through here and let's zip up our module and create. Yes, replace it is fine, and then let's go to the back end and install it. So we'll go to extensions manage install. We're going to browse and of course we're going to go to our project folder and we're going to grab the random quote zip file that we just created. Upload and install. So now let's see if it worked. Let's go to extensions modules. Well there's the random quote module and open that. Ah and there we go. Replace title with author's name. Yes, no, yes, no. Now interestingly enough So you see the uh, bootstrap class here highlights the selected answer. If, if this one is selected, yes, it's green. If this one's selected, it's no. Let you know which one is selected. And again, uh, for this to work properly, you have to use the uh, no values. The default is zero. Otherwise, you have a green button here and a green button here. So anyway, well, replace the uh, title with author's name. So we see that our uh, translation uh, string is working. If we mouse over it, um, ah, looky here. So it looks like we got an error. The description um, parameter is a little messed up. So let's see what we've done here. So let's uh, open up our XML file. So it's good to make mistakes in a sense. Okay, random mod random quote param author title underscore d e s e description so let's open up the language file to make sure that we've got that in there correct remember that's the ini file so mod uh, quote param author title underscore d e s c equals hmm i wonder what's going on here let me uh, investigate it and i'll get back to you Okay, I've discovered it. Over here in the XML file, I got random instead of random. So let me correct that here. And save that. Alright, we can close these files. And let's go zip this back up and try it again. Uh, compress. 
create yes replace it all right let's go back over here to the back end and extensions manage install browse on random quotes open upload and install it says it was successful so we'll go to modules random quote now when we mouse over it ah all is good replace the title of the module with the author's name so I'm um, sorry you had to sit through that uh, but you know we all make mistakes and sometimes it's uh, helpful to see other people make mistakes uh, if you guys don't like that sort of stuff maybe I can uh, take the time to edit uh, some of that stuff out of these videos or, or something to make it a little more pleasant for you okay so at this point we have uh, created a parameter in our XML file we've done the translation strings uh, it shows up in our module so now we need to um, we need to figure out how to access this parameter that we created um, from code but first of all let's say uh, let's select yes here and I'm gonna hit save now, so now we're gonna go back over here and just take a look at something so we're kinda digging around in the intros a little bit so if we log into PHP my admin remember that's root and whatever password you set for it and we look at the Joomla database and we scroll down for till we get to the modules uh, there it is and we take a look and ours obviously should be the last one and we're gonna scroll over here so we can see the parameters you'll see author title author title so author title here has been set the the value of or the parameters called author title and the value is set to author title so if we come over here and select no and hit save and come back over here and refresh this <clears throat> we see that author title is set to zero so we see that uh, our parameters are in fact being stored to the Joomla database to the um, mod uh, to the modules table so alright so let's talk about um, the um, the intros a little bit the inside of the module so when you create a module there are certain variables that are available to you okay and if uh, you wanted to see them you can do a ver dump and and see them the problem here with the module is in this position is you have very very little space uh, over here to see uh, what it dumps out and it'd be quite long it would sure would be handy if we can get the module to print over here in the component area in this area of the screen so let's do that and we um, we can do that by playing just a little bit of, of a trick uh, on Joomla or or actually maybe it's just a feature of Joomla so I'm gonna change the position to a position that doesn't exist and I'm gonna call it my position okay and oops try that again okay so now we see this position is set to my position and we're gonna save and close that now see if we come over here and hit home you see our module disappears because there is no position called my position so the way to get it to display in the content area is to create an article okay and I've created one called mod test so uh, create call it call it whatever you want and then inside in the body of it we're just gonna put in curly braces load position space and then whatever position that we gave it well we called I called mine my position so once you have that you obviously you want to make sure it's published okay and we'll save that and then finally we'll come over oh, save and close I'm sorry and finally we need to um, create a menu and I have created a, a, a menu entry called random quote and random quote loads the this you know single article called mod test right alright so we'll save and close that so now if we come over here and hit home now we have a random quote um, link now see so notice our random quote displays over here so now if we wanted to do a ver dump or look at uh, other data that's coming from the module we can dump it out and we have more room to see 
so this is not nece uh, not necessary and and if you don't want to uh, um, mess with this stuff um, you can skip forward in the video so if we were to in the main PHP file now look I'm gonna do something here just a little bit different I'm gonna go to the desktop where I have my Joomla dev install and then I'm going to go to the modules folder so I'm actually working with the files that are on the server and this is a uh, actually a way that you'll want to develop later we just haven't uh, covered it yet so just kinda of bear with me and let's go to the random quote and then let's open up the um, random quotes main PHP module here so um, let's see if we can figure out a way to um, get the modules um, you know what's defined there so PHP has this handy little um, function called ver dump right which will dump out the uh, uh, value uh, and, and type of variables okay um, getting a little lost here okay sorry about that and uh, the are the value or the contents of a variable so inside that we're gonna say get defined uh, vars or var variables right so this is a PHP function that um, Bring, it returns a list of all the defined variables that have been created and Veridump of course will display them so let's hit save now let's go back over to the front end and hit random quote uh, menu link again so now we see all kinds of stuff so we see that um, there's uh, an array called uh, module uh, that looks like it has uh, the module ID and the title ah, look at there title so let's remember that we're gonna need that uh, and then it has a bunch of other stuff about the array or I'm sorry about the uh, module um, has information about the document and if we keep going down here it's got the session and the response and it's got all kinds of stuff available here so let's look at uh, this one there's another one called params now params is a, a variable that holds um, all the parameters of the of the module and if we look down here we see author title right and the value is zero we see the module tag div the header class the header tag size so these are all module these are all parameters available in the module in the back end if we were uh, to go to extension modules go to our random quote module all of these parameters we're seeing are like this one here the author title the menu assignment module param uh, uh, module permissions advance all this see there's the header tag and the class and the stuff that we've seen that we dumped out uh, in our view over here uh, and there's a lot of stuff here so if you know if you want to play this way and take a look it's kind of interesting to see what um, what uh, uh, is available there's uh, you know, there's strings available uh, these are language strings and if you go through here you'll see J yes and J no or these are all translated and they're held uh, so that Joomla can find them quicker etc 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 so the thing to take away from here is that uh, by moving the module position to the component area you can display some data that uh, would be easier to see than it would be if you're trying to dump the data into the module position itself and uh, by dumping um, the uh, defined variables that we have we have an opportunity to see what is available to us that Joomla creates and the two most important ones that uh, uh, that uh, Joomla creates for us is the uh, params object which is a J registry object and the module object which is a standard class object or standard PHP object so um, let's uh let's let's put all some of this stuff together so let's go back here uh, to the uh, live site and let's delete this line that we put in here and we'll, we'll save that so that uh, things are back to normal and we'll come over here and we'll go to the module and put this back in position seven of protostar where we had it um, 
right there. Uh, save that. So now when we hit home, our module's back over here and, and the other stuff is gone. All right, so let's put all this together. Um, okay, recall that uh, we said we were going to use another view. So let's go back to our project uh, folder. So I'm going to go to projects mod random quote and the TMPL and these are the different. See, we have a default view and uh, we're going to create another view. So if they want the title, if they don't want um, the module title replaced with their title, we're going to use the default view. Otherwise, we're going to use a custom view. So I'm just going to copy this and let's paste it here and let's rename this to author title. Okay. So remember, we said that we're just going to use a view of the same name, author title PHP. So let's open this up. Okay, so what we want the obviously we want the JX or die. Uh, we in this case we don't want to put their name, right? Uh, we want to leave that out because that's going to be part of the um, module title, and that's uh, really all we need to do. So the difference between the default and this view is that the view, um, the author title view, will not have the author's name in the body of the. Uh, of the uh, module where the default one will. So let's save and close that. So that was really simple. We just copied the default, renamed it, and removed one line. Okay. So now we need to open up the components PHP file. And this is where all the magic happens. So let's open that up with gedit. Okay, so right now we're saying, it, we'll just recall that we're getting our helper file, um, our helper class, and we're calling the get random quote from the helper class and it comes back as quote and then you know we're calling the we're manually calling the default module but we want to do this programmatically okay so first um, right after this line let's, uh, let's add a comment here uh, we're going to determine uh, which view to use um, if no view is stored uh, and the parameter uh, we uh, will set the value to default. Okay, so let me explain. When uh, you install a module, if you've not set any of the parameters, the the parameter may not be stored to that modules table. Okay, so when we pull a parameter, we have to uh, be uh, aware of that, or we're going to come across some uh, unexpected bugs. So our view, uh, we're going to set this to a variable, will equal. Remember, I told you that there was um, a params uh, object uh, j registry object that's created that we can access so params get and we're going to use the get method of params get allows you to get a um, a variable and if that variable doesn't uh, exist or doesn't return anything you can uh, substitute a, um, a default value okay so in our case we're looking for the, uh, the value of a parameter called author title. Remember we set that in our form field. And if that uh, parameter doesn't exist in the table, we want to give it a uh, we want to give it a default value. Now remember our default view is called default, so that's what we're going to use. Okay? So now at this point, um, we have the view that we want to use um, and it's either going to be set to author title if they said yes it will be set to zero if it's no and if they set nothing at all and it's not been saved um, the view will have the value of default okay so let me um, let me continue on here I'm actually going to pause add some code and then go over the code maybe to save some time Okay, so I've uh, got this entered in, and, and uh, if you guys, uh, uh, I probably will continue to do this in the future, add code and then explain it, uh, rather than forcing you guys to uh, watch me type it in. 
uh, with my slow typing and all that fun stuff. So anyway, let's uh, let's let's go back over this and 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 uh, talk about what this code does. So we call our get random quote from our module helper, which returns a quote and stores it to uh, our variable called quote. So which we already knew that. And then um, depending on uh, the value that the user has set for the author title parameter that we set up in the back, it will contain uh, either nothing at all, right? Uh, or it will contain the value of author title, or if they said no, it will contain the value of zero. Okay, so the first thing we do is we're going to uh, we use a variable called view that's going to hold the value of this author title. We're using the params um, uh, variable, which is a uh, J registry object that Joomla provides to us, and we're calling the get method on it. The get method takes two uh, parameters. The first is the name of the parameter that you're trying to get and the second is a default value if the parameter doesn't exist. So we're saying, hey, get author title for us. If author title contains uh, nothing at all, then use the word default. Otherwise, it's going to contain um, the value of author title or it's going to contain the value of zero. So at this point, you know, we need to, uh, uh, you know, if the view is set to author title, so if author title is returned, we, we need to make some changes, right? So here we check to see if the view uh, had returned author title. Is it equal to author, author title? And if it does, remember we had this module standard class object that had uh, information about the module. So here we're going to say the module title equals the quote name. Okay, the quote name is the the name of the author that we return from our quote variable. And then finally, uh, in the params, we're going to uh, remember that the params J registry object has all the values of all the parameters for that module. And uh, one of them that uh, we're interested in here is the header tag. Now if we've done nothing at all with the header tag and left it at its default H3, um, the longer names like uh, Alexander Hamilton and, and some of these guys, uh, they would they would line wrap. So to kind of prevent some of the line wrapping, we're going to just uh, on the fly change the header tag from an h3 to an h4 so to do that we're going to use the set method of the of the j registry um, uh, object and we're going to say the header tag and then this is the value that we want to set it to okay so if the uh, view is set to author title we've made the necessary changes on the fly with both the module and the header tag okay so now if they said no um, the return value to uh, the view would be zero. And if that's the case, you know, we don't have a view called zero. Okay, so we want it to use our default. So here we check to see if the view uh, value that was returned is zero. And if it is, we just set the view to be in default. And then finally down here, uh, when we get the layout path, remember before, we just had the string here called default, which we call the default.php view. So now, programmatically we've we've set the view and we need to say hey we want we want to get the layout path for the random quote module and then this is the view we want now remember this at this point it's either going to say default right or it's going to say author title the default remember shows the regular module title because we haven't manipulated it uh, if it says you know if, if the view is author title it will have the uh, modules titles changed to the uh, name of the author and we're going to reduce the header tag slightly. So that's all that we need um, to change for this file. So we've covered a lot of stuff here um, and it's probably a little confusing and again I, I apologize. You know, I'm not the world's best teacher. Um, I'm a little slow at getting these out but I do enjoy trying to help somebody and I would encourage you to read uh, either the web page or take the time to download the uh, tutorial uh, where you don't get so much blathering and babbling. All right, so with let's save this and it's time to test our work. So let's uh, come over here to our project folder and let's zip this all up and create a new zip file. Yes, I want to replace that and then let's go install it and see what happens. So on the back end, we'll go to oops. I'll log back in. Sorry about that. So on the back end, we're going to uh, manage and install. We're going to browse mod random quote. 
upload and install. Well, that seems to think that was successful. Let's go to extension and let's go to modules. Let's select our random quote module. All right, so here's our our uh, thing. So let's say uh, replace the uh, title with the author's title. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to save that. So when I come back over to the home page, uh, to the front end, and select home, everything looks normal. The module title says random quote. Here's the author's name. Here's the quote and the source. All right, so let's go change this uh, parameter to yes and save that and let's come back to the front end and test it. We'll hit home. So now you notice that the module title has been changed to the uh, author's name and the author's name is not included then in the um, in the uh, uh, body of the module. Now we can, uh, you know, uh, the nice thing about parameters is that if you want multiple views um, uh, showing different things like so maybe in one place I want the uh, you know the author title um, the author's name to be the title like we have here and um, in other places I just wanted to say a random quote and then you know the random quote of the of the user uh, we can do that by creating another instance of the module and, and I'm sure you already know how to do that if not let me know and and I'll show you um, so I, I guess the end game here is, you know, given our extensions parameters gives us a lot of flexibility for our projects. Joomla makes it easy to add and access these parameters through fields and through the XML file. Uh, and the params J registry object uh, that it creates for us uh, when the module runs, you know, it's, it's easy to access it. So in the next module episode, we'll talk about versioning our module and how the upgrade works. Uh, thanks for taking the time. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to go to uh, myheat.com and um, you know hit the contact link uh, and ask me a question or if you're on the YouTube page and you're watching the video uh, feel free to you know to, to comment uh, underneath the video if you have any anything um, you need to ask or or if you can answer some of my questions or look if I'm doing something wrong um, let me know if there's things that I can do to to make this series a, a little easier to watch um, or a little more understandable um, just let me know. So in the meantime, have a blessed day.